Well, BC Ferries is in the government's crosshairs once more tonight. The ferry commissioner has ordered a sweeping review of the company, its schedules, and its fares. The move comes as passengers are bracing themselves for big increases on the major and minor routes over the next four years. But will they see any relief? A News Legislature reporter Shachi Curl joins us now with more. Shachi. Hudson, with so many people here on Vancouver Island depending on BC ferries to get back and forth, this definitely looks and sounds like big news to them. But whether it actually results in a relief and a lightened or a heavier wallet for them remains to be seen. Like that size to stop. It's a question at the heart of how BC Ferries operates. Should the company focus on keeping travel affordable for the people who depend on the fleet? Or is it more important to keep costs down? Officially, it's both, but more and more fulfilling both requirements is getting harder and harder. BC Ferries has already mused about raising fares anywhere from 16 to 100 percent over the next four years, with northern routes taking the biggest hits. But now, BC Ferries independent watchdog is stepping in. It's very clear that people who live in ferry dependent communities around the province are, are very concerned about the fare increases they see coming over the next four years. Just two weeks into the job, Ferries Commissioner Gord McAtee has launched a full-scale look at how ferry rates are set and the impact on travellers in coastal communities. With a view to assessing whether the Act um, is able to balance the interests of ferry users, the new responsibility, against the uh, financial sustainability of the ferry operator. It may look like a shot at how Ferries President and CEO David Hahn has run the company with an eye on both revenue and the bottom line over the last eight years, but Hahn says he supports the review, though he warns it won't be easy to find savings, especially with fuel prices on the rise again. Ferries should be affordable, but uh, dealing with the pressures that exist, particularly one like fuel, which is way beyond our control. The ferry system doesn't pay for itself, but users still depend on it the way they depend on highways. If fares are frozen, it doesn't ease BC Ferries cost pressures. So what's the end game? Will government increase its subsidy to BC Ferries? The opposition is demanding it. The minister responsible isn't committing to anything yet. The uh, infrastructure that uh, is necessary would probably be helped out with government coffers. Is all of this leading to an increase in the subsidy? Oh, you know, I don't know what it's going to take. I don't want to predetermine what the commissioner is going to come back with. And he won't have to because the results of the review won't be out for at least a year, long after an expected fall election and any discussion around BC ferries during a campaign. And Hudson, the timing of this review is interesting to say the least. It captured a lot of attention today because it comes on the heels of a, um, of a review of BC hydro rates, a reversal on increasing ICBC rates and raising the minimum wage. And these are all changes that are aimed at muting voter anger. And of course, in the case of BC ferries, a review certainly takes the issue off the table during an election for the Clark government. Mm -hmm. Shachi, thank you. Thank Shachi you. Shachi Curl reporting.